tell me the truth. Could your social media graphics use just a little bit of TLC? If you answered yes, then you're gonna wanna stick with me because in this video, you're going to learn how to design social media graphics for your online business that not only stand out, but make you look like the professional I know you are. You've certainly got some amazing knowledge to share with the world and you would not want your social media graphics to tell your audience otherwise right? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kristen and I share branding, graphic design, and Canva tips, tricks, tutorials, and productivity hacks for online entrepreneurs who don't have tons of time to waste in Canva. So I want to share with you just a couple tips before we dig in. The first tip is to not try to be on every social media platform. You don't need to be everywhere right now. Choose one or two platforms to start with, and then once you get the hang of it, you can layer in additional platforms. The the second tip that I want to share with you is the concept of repurposing your social media graphics. This is going to give you the most bang for the time you spend creating them. Over time, you can create some kind of design workflow that you can follow each and every time you create a new piece of content for your business and you're ready to market it on social media. For example, the main way that I share content is right here on this YouTube channel. And if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can continue learning how to design amazing graphics alongside me. My workflow is probably going to look a little bit different than yours, but hopefully you can use this as an example and some inspiration to help you ditch the overwhelm when it's time to create graphics. The first graphic that I create is the YouTube thumbnail. From there, I will create a blog post featured image using the same layout from the YouTube thumbnail. Once my blog post is ready to go, I repurpose the featured image graphic into three different Pinterest pins. Since Pinterest pins are tall and vertical, I quickly rearrange any of the elements and text to fit that size. I then repurpose to create a variety of different Instagram posts. That's just my personal design workflow, and there are tons of different graphics that you could be potentially creating for your business. I share a whole list of them in my branding and design quick start guide, which I'll link in the video description. The very first thing that you need to think about before you create social media graphics is the goal of your content and your graphics. I know that you are definitely not creating social media graphics just for the heck of it. You're trying to run your online business, right? Obviously, when you're marketing your business on social media, you want to grab people's attention, draw them in, and get them excited to click into your content. But let's take that a little bit deeper. Some common goals that you might have for your social media graphics are brand awareness, gaining trust and credibility, sharing your knowledge or expertise, creating engagement, lead generation, or even driving your viewers to purchase a product. Knowing the goal of your graphic beforehand can actually help you reverse engineer so they're designed to convert. Let's talk about the actual social media graphics themselves. I'm going to break this down in as few details as possible because my goal here is not to overwhelm you. I'm trying to simplify the process. Just about every social media graphic is made up of a handful of things. Number one, an image or photo. When looking for photos, make sure that they are high resolution and are relevant to your content. I usually grab a few options to see which image works best with my layout. Just make sure that they fit with the overall vibe and tone of your visual brand. When you're choosing images, always think about how you're going to incorporate the text. Speaking of text, that's the next element that makes up your social media graphics. When you're adding text to your graphics, stick to your brand fonts and make sure that they also convey the overall vibe and tone of your brand. I recommend having a very readable serif or sans serif font paired with a font with a little bit more personality, like a handwritten or script font. You must make sure that any fonts you're using are very readable. If your viewers can't read it, they're gonna keep on scrolling. You need to stick to your brand's color palette and do not stray. It's a good idea to use no more than three colors in any social media graphic you create. To make sure that your message is clear and readable, you'll probably need to incorporate some kind of shapes or other design elements you can use circles, squares, rectangles, or even organic blobs or geometric shapes to help your text stand off of your background. In case you don't know this about me by now, I am all about 
creating consistent on-brand graphics. Doing this is going to help your audience recognize you, remember you, and trust you. You really wanna feel like a familiar friend when you pop up in their feed. If you're like, oh my gosh, Kristen, I have none of this, my brand is all over the place, then do yourself a favor and grab that branding and design quick start guide at the link in the video description because I'm gonna dig into all of that inside. There are a few other things that you want to strive for. You need to make your graphics eye-catching, your message readable, and your design professional looking. And you can achieve all of this by applying some very simple basic graphic design principles. It is very important for you to understand that design is to communicate, not to decorate. Your goal is to get your message across in the clearest and simplest way possible. You don't need a ton of bells and whistles and you don't need to add all kinds of doodads just because you feel like you're designing. You will be much better off if you keep your graphics simple, especially when you're just getting the hang of it. If something in your design doesn't have a purpose, then don't use it. It's just going to clutter up your graphic. So let's dig in to the design principles. This is going to be really easy for you to remember because there's an acronym that's going to help you. PARC. P-A-R-C. The P in park is for proximity, and proximity is, simply put, the spatial relationship between all of the elements in your design. If elements belong together, they should be in closer proximity to each other. If elements do not belong together, there should be a little bit more space in between them. The A in park stands for alignment. You want to make sure that all of your text and elements are perfectly aligned in your social media graphics. You can align text to the left, to the right, or straight down the center. The R in park is for repetition. You want to use the same colors, the same fonts, and the same image style in all of the graphics that you create. Similar layouts and design styles are going to help you achieve consistency. The C in park stands for contrast. You can use contrast to make certain keywords or key phrases pop off of your design. Another simple contrast Tip to remember is that if you are placing text on a dark background, your text should be white or light. If you are placing text on a light background, your text should be black or one of your dark brand colors. This is going to ensure that your message can be read in a matter of seconds. When creating your graphics, it's important to consider the flow. What do you want your viewer to see first, second, third, and so on? You also want to make sure that your graphics are visually balanced so they don't throw your viewer off. The place of your elements, the colors you use, and how you incorporate text into your social media images can help you achieve a balanced design. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, I'm going to jump into my favorite design software, Canva, and show you how I would go about creating a social media graphic inside of my Canva account. And if you don't have Canva, I highly recommend that you start using this powerful design software. And that says a lot coming from me, who used to be a total Adobe snob. You probably know that different social media platforms call for different size graphics. For example, Instagram posts are square, YouTube thumbnails are more horizontal and Pinterest pins are tall and vertical. Get familiar with the different sizes needed for each platform you're marketing on and create one design file in Canva for each. This makes repurposing your graphics or parts of your graphics super simple. For this example, I'm going to be showing you how to create a Facebook post that can also be used as an Instagram post. My design workflow usually starts with a YouTube thumbnail, but some since Facebook and Instagram are both high on the list of the most used social media platforms, I'm going to be creating some graphics to market this video on those platforms. You are going to be shown tons and tons of done for you and fully editable templates over here in the left-hand panel. While templates are a great starting point, I personally find that sometimes it's a little bit more challenging to edit them without feeling a little bit boxed in. If anything, you can use these templates for some inspiration to create your own social media graphics. Before I start designing, I like to think about what all I'm going to include on my image. I usually start with a background image, add in a headline and throw on a call to action button and then incorporate any other additional graphics or elements. I have tons of on-brand stock photos already uploaded. I'm just going to click the image and it adds to the canvas. From here, I can adjust, I can rotate it, I can crop, I can zoom in. And as I'm doing this, in the back of my head, I'm thinking about how I'm going to incorporate the text 
any text that I place on this background is going to be hard to read because there's quite a bit going on in this picture. And if I just put text on top of this, it's going to be really hard to read. So I'm gonna click R to add a square to my document. This is one of my go-to tricks for helping my text stand out. I'm going to select one of my brand colors and drop the transparency of this box so that the photo is peeking through just slightly. Now that I have my background, I can go ahead and add some text. The keyboard shortcut for adding text to your design in Canva is T. The headline for my graphic is simple social media post design tips for better graphics. As you're adding text, it's really important to think about which keyword words or phrases you want to stand out on your graphic. One tip that I find super helpful is to add your text in separate text boxes. This is going to make it a lot easier for you to manipulate different pieces and parts of your text headline. You can change the fonts. Hopefully you have some brand fonts already decided. You can also add different shapes to your social media graphics to help important words stand out or make it just look a little bit more interesting. I want this graphic to be really readable, so I'm going to apply some different effects and change the color of my text so that my audience can read it really easily. You can add in additional elements like thin lines or arrows to help guide your viewer through your graphic. Adding simple shapes like rectangles or square and placing them behind text can help you create more engaging and interesting looking graphics. I also find that angling text and elements creates a little bit of interesting movement in your designs. I love adding a little bit of dimension and interest to my graphics using some of Canva's text effects like the outer glow. You can then add in some on-brand design elements to jazz up your graphics just a little bit more. The goal of this graphic is to get people to watch the video that you are watching right now. So I'm going to add a short and sweet call to action to get my viewers to do exactly what I want them to. To create some repetition in my graphic, I'm going to curve my text just a little bit so it matches the curve of that pink circle. I'm going to place my call to action at the very bottom of the graphic since that is the last area that my viewer is going to be seeing. If you wanna repurpose this post to get more bang for your time spent, select everything on your canvas, pop over to another tab. I'm going to make a Pinterest pin by pasting all of the elements onto this canvas. I'm then going to resize it to fit in the space just a little bit better. And I'm noticing that I didn't grab my background image. So I'm gonna go grab that paste that into the template, make a few slight adjustments to fill the space. Make sure everything is centered and I'm able to easily repurpose one graphic on multiple different platforms. I know I covered a lot in this video, but without a doubt, I know that you have it in you to create some standout social media graphics. But it's going to be a whole lot easier if you understand the basics of branding and graphic design and how all of that plays a role in your business. Don't forget to grab my free branding and design quick start guide where I'm going to walk you through step by step all of the techniques that you can use to better manage the design side of your business. I can't wait to see what you create. Bye.